Chapter 5 Process Discovery Section 3 Process Modeling Method In this section, we discuss a stepwise method to conduct the modeling exercise. There are five steps. First, identify the process boundaries. Second, identify activities and events. Third, identify resources and their handovers. Fourth, identify the control flow. Five, identify additional elements, such as data objects, events, exception handling, and so forth. When modeling the process, we first have to identify the process boundaries. We need to understand what are the triggers of the process. We also need to understand what are the possible outcomes. We also need to clarify which perspective we assume for modeling the process. And finally, what artifacts are required as input and output to the process. Let's consider the example of a purchase order. A trigger is the purchase order being received. Potential outcomes are that the order is fulfilled or the order is rejected. We may take the perspective of the seller. And the artifacts that we need to consider are the purchase order, the invoice, and the shipment notice. Next, we need to identify the major activities and events of this process. For our example, we have already identified the triggering event and the different outcome events. There are different activities in between. We need to check stock availability, we need to confirm the order, we need to ship the goods, we may reject the order, we need to emit the invoice, and we archive the order. These activities are now identified, but they are not yet in the very precise order how they unfold over the time. Now let us identify the resources and the handoffs for our process. We already stated that we assume the perspective of the seller. The selling company is subdivided into different participants. There's the sales department and the warehouse and distribution department. The latter being subdivided into the warehouse staff and the ERP system that conducts certain steps automatically. We can now identify who is responsible for the different activities. This is done by placing the activities and events in the corresponding pools and lines. This helps us now to identify handoffs. We identify a handoff between the ERP system and the sales department. There's another handoff between sales and the warehouse staff. And from the warehouse staff, there's a handoff back to the sales department. There's also the customer involved. We interact with the customer by means of messages. The customer places the purchase order. The confirm or reject of the order is informed to the customer by help of a message. Also, the shipping notice and the invoice goes to the customer.
now we need to ask ourselves, what is the actual control flow? You see here the picture where gateways and control flow args have been added. You see that the gateways represent that there is a choice to either confirm or reject the order. There's also an end split and an end join to represent that ship goods and image invoice are being done in parallel. Finally, we need to identify additional elements that are important to represent for our process. You see here that information objects in information systems are represented. There's the purchase order that is processed. You see the PO with different status information of checked, confirmed, and so forth. There's also the shipment notice and the invoice. There are two databases being involved, the warehouse database and the orders database. 